Oh yeah. Oh. 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 What? All right, everybody, let's worship.
afternoon. I'm so glad for you to be joining me. Um, I miss you guys, but I'm excited to be continuing in this series of Jesus Is. Um, you know, I'm not proud of this story, but when I was little, uh, I was with my mother one time, and I was getting ready to go spend the night at my friend's house. And uh, so the night before, me and my mom were just sitting around in the living room, we were talking, and uh, she was just commenting and just saying about how well his parents was progressing in this diet that they were doing. Um, they wanted to get into shape. They wanted to kind of choose to eat a little bit healthier. And so she was just asking me, she said, do you know what they're doing? And I said, of course, you know, me wanting to be involved. I was like, yeah, my, you know, his mom told me they were doing this slim fast thing. And, you know, they, they lost all this weight and they're just feeling really good and all this. And my mom was like, really? I'm like, wow. So the next day came and she took me to my friend's house to spend the night. And uh, so we're sitting there and she drops me off and she starts talking to her mother. And one thing led to another. My mom says, so I heard you doing the slim fast um, to help, you know, to get in shape and things. And she said, slim fast? She said, no, I'm not doing slim fast. And she started going to, to tell my mom what she was doing and, and the different things that they were taking um, to get into shape, right? And so I got caught in, a, in my lie. I got caught in a lie. And so I'm sure that we could all relate. I'm sure that there's some point in our lives where we've all told a lie and we probably, I'm guessing that even through that lie, we end up getting caught in the midst of it. Um, but there are lies and then there is truth, right? But have you noticed that it's not always easy to tell the difference between the two? You see, for the last two weeks, we've been talking about who Jesus is. And the first week, we talked about Jesus is God. And then last week, we talked about how Jesus is our Savior. But today, we're going to be talking about a third thing that Jesus is. You see, many people believe that truth doesn't really matter. Uh, some people say that truth doesn't even exist. They say that there is no way to know if anything is always true for everyone. This isn't a new debate. A man named Pilate seems to have engaged with Jesus in this very debate just before Jesus was sentenced to death for crimes he did not commit. You see, in John uh, 18, verses 20 and 38, it says, Then they led Jesus from the house of Cyphus to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters, so they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and he said, What accusation do you bring against this man? And they answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have developed or delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was the this was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord? Or did others say it to you about me? And Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king for this purpose. I was born, and for this purpose I will have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? After he had said this, 
he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. The, relate, the religious leaders of the day, they wanted Jesus dead. Like we said two weeks ago, Jesus was claimed to be God, and that outraged the religious leaders. It made them mad. But they had a problem. Legally, they weren't allowed to sentence anyone to death. You see, they needed the Roman government to do that for them. The religious leaders took Jesus to Roman government, which was Pilate. But Pilate wasn't convinced that Jesus had done anything wrong for death. Pilate's, Pilate's questions Jesus as he tries to figure out what's going on and what he should do about it. And you see, Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? If Jesus is claiming to be king, Pilate has a problem because their government already has a king. Pilate can't have someone threatening to take Herod's rightful spot as the king. So Jesus, a king? First, Jesus responds with a question. Then Jesus basically says, well, kind of. Um, he has a kingdom, he says, but it's not an earthly kingdom. Pilate is confused now. He just wants to know if Jesus, his goal is to overthrow the king but Jesus says his goal is something very different. To testify to the truth. What is truth? Pilate responds. There is some debate over what Pilate meant by this. You see, was he sincerely asking about truth? Was he suggesting that there is no such thing as truth? Or was he talking about Jesus' trial and impending death? Suggested that whether or not Jesus was truly guilty didn't matter. He was probably going to be killed anyway. I'm not sure, but his question is still good what is truth? It's not always easy to know what's true. But in this case, Jesus makes it pretty clear. He says he is truth. And he came to show the world what truth is. I told, I told you earlier... What I had to say about Jesus today might be offensive. This claim is what makes Jesus different. But it's always what helped get him killed. See, Jesus claimed he is the truth. And those of us who trust in him still believe it to this day. That truth isn't just an idea that truth is actually a person. This isn't the first time Jesus made this claim. Just a few cha um, chapters earlier, Jesus said something similar to his disciples. And it says in John 14, 1 and 7, Let not your hearts be troubled, but ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. 
and where I am, there ye may be also. In John 14, 1 through 7, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and away ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. You see, Jesus' friends were upset because Jesus was starting to anger people wherever they went. And his bold and controversial teachings were putting their lives at risk. So to comfort them and let them know that he had a plan, no matter what happened next, Jesus said he would be going to his father's house to prepare a place for them. A place where God is and where they were also invited as well. See, Jesus' friends seemed a little stumped. But Jesus assured them that they do actually know the way because they know Jesus. See, he is the one true way to God. Jesus made a pretty bold claim in John 14. See, Jesus' claim makes a lot of people uncomfortable. See, but Jesus reminded them who he was. And that's the truth. But he seemed to give them plenty of time and space to kind of let it sink in. To kind of register. And I think he does the same for us too. Here's what I find so interesting about how Jesus talked about truth. Jesus didn't say, here is the way, the truth, and the life. You will come to the Father if you do these five things correctly. No, instead he said, I am the way. And Jesus didn't give us a textbook to fill out with all of the, the right answers, right? No, he gave us himself and invited us to get to know him. So who is Jesus? Jesus is truth. Maybe you're thinking, okay, fine, Jesus is truth. What does that mean for me? Where, why does this even matter? There's one more moment from the book of John that I want to look at before I close here this evening. And that's from John chapter 8, and that's verse 32. And it says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. When we know Jesus, we know the truth. And his truth sets us free. Sets us free from the power of sin and death. From believing lies about God, ourselves, and others. From anger, guilt, shame, fear, brokenness, unforgiveness, 
or even anything that is is keeping us captive, keeping us from living our best life. Because Jesus is truth. And his truth sets us free. There's so much that truth of Jesus frees us from. Whether it's sin that we've committed, lies that we believe, or brokenness that's holding us captive, the truth of Jesus can set us free from it all. If Jesus is truth and the true way to God, do you know him? If you don't, then maybe tonight is the day you want to begin the journey of knowing Jesus better. If Jesus is truth, then the truth sets us free. What do you need to be set free? What do you need to be set free from? Will you let the truth of Jesus set you free? If you're here tonight and you haven't accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, and you would like to do that, and you would like to be set free from your sins, and from the things that are holding you back, that are holding you captive, I encourage you, you can reach out to me, one of our leaders, and just, I would love to talk to you, pray with you, and help you with that decision to walk with Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight and we thank you for the message. We thank you for your word. Lord, I pray you'll just be with each and every one of our students. Lord, I pray you'll just give them comfort. Lord, I just pray that you'll be with all the leaders, be with our pastors, be with our president. Lord, I pray you just continue to bless and protect us through this uh, crisis that we're going through, Lord. And Lord, we know that you are almighty and that you are in control. And Lord, we'll be back here when it is time. And Lord, we love you. And Lord, I pray that you'll just touch the person that is listening tonight. If they haven't accepted you as a personal Savior, Lord, I hope that they'll decide to make that choice. Lord, touch their hearts. Bless each and every one of them. Lord, we love you and thank you for all that you do. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.